Bell Bill, the Hall of Fame collector. Here it is, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, my typical time when I like to shoot some videos. Uh, I had just posted uh, a few video contest responses. I wanted to get a few more in um, briefly. First one I uh, should mention is Caesar Peppino Man. Uh, he is celebrating 1,400 or 1,400 subscribers. So congratulations to him. Go check him out. I would imagine everyone who is subscribed to me is subscribed to Pepino Man, but I could be wrong. Uh, he has a very interesting contest where we have to go uh, back to a number of his videos, comment uh, our pop most popular video, and... Um, and also guess the cost of, of uh, one of his videos that he to produce. So I did that. So uh, I'm in the running, but I just wanted to congratulate uh, uh, Pepino Man on 1,400 subscribers. Next, I want to hit up Bean Town 62 Jim, celebrating 100 plus subscribers. Uh, from what I gather, he wants us to simply uh, mention. A, in person who has been, I guess, snubbed from the Hall of Fame or should be in. Um, that one is pretty easy for me to sort of uh, go after here. And since I'm in my old school binders, I'm going to uh, show some old school stuff. I don't have the autographs in front of me at this moment. For, uh, so um, he was in his 10th and final year of eligibility, uh, somebody who I think was a Hall of Famer as a kid. Uh, obviously, I kept the cards and binders, so I knew he was great then. And it's just surprising to me to see him not in the Hall of Fame after those 10 years. I ultimately do believe he will get in uh, via the Veterans Committee. So I will go with... Fred McGriff, one of my favorite simple clean designs uh, I used to like this was Studio. Uh, so that is Fred McGriff as a Studio card. And another nice card, just pulled from my binders, the stuff I pulled as a kid. Fred McGriff, Flair. Um, one of the first really glossy and thick card stocks out there. Just love that um, as a kid. So. Uh, congratulations to you, Jim. 100 plus subscribers. You should be getting up there and higher and higher and higher as you continue to grow in the community. And last one I wanted to mention uh, is Sight on Baseball Cards. Tony, you are celebrating 500 subscribers. Um, you might find that hard to believe, but certainly you deserve it. Uh, great channel. Um, very approachable uh, and really enjoy your videos. Uh, you want us to basically show one to 10 cards um, that maybe you haven't shown on you on YouTube, kind of just stuff that you kind of forgot about, um, which is kind of what got me into my binders. Since I show most of my stuff, um, you know, my autographs and things that I've picked up since I started collecting in 05, what I haven't really shown is the cards that I collected as a kid um, going back. So, uh, jumped into my old school binders and picked out just, I mean, I could have gone way more than 10. I don't even know what I have in front of me. I probably have more than 10. But just some random cards with a little story behind them, just reminiscing. These are cards that I would never get rid of. Um, first one here um, is a, Clear Metal, Mother Load, Manny Ramirez. Now, what you see here is uh, reminding me immediately of, I love this card, by the way. I don't think it was terribly impossible to get in packs, um, but the simple, clean, white design, the foil accents, uh, I just loved this card. It didn't matter if it was rare or not. And what do you, what do you see in this that you see in my collecting habits today? That foil, that white background, reminds me very much of the flawless cards that I love and, and PC. Next one here uh, is, again, I collected 95, 96, 97 as a kid. 
So this is when like parallels and different things came out and it was just really cool to get something different. Uh, this being one of them, it's an Albert Bell wooden card. Uh, it is serially numbered out of 5,000 on the back, but I remember getting the redemption. I believe it was a redemption where you had to send the thing in and then like they sent you the real wooden card. Um, but just to have a wooden card and serially numbered at that time was really cool. I mean, I was blown away when I got that card. Here's another one here. I don't know what year it is. Um, Top Stadium Club, 83 All-Star Game. Um, it was basically one of these games that you can play. And if you call the number, scratched off the thing, uh, you had a 1 in 2,955 chance of, I guess, winning an All-Star ring. Um, so when I pulled it, I remember vividly pulling it um, and being really happy, jumping in Beckett and uh, highlighting all, you know, I've, of course I highlighted all the stuff in my Beckett's, but um, I didn't scratch it off because I thought maybe it was worth more unscratched. So pretty cool with that. Another thing I pulled, another thing here, just wanted to show you um, one of the couple Michael Jordan cards I have. I think this is a very common card to get, but Flair was cool the, and just Michael Jordan. I mean, his stuff is crazy right now. I know that's a cheap card, but um, how about this one? This one was one of the first die cuts I got and was, again, blown away by die cuts. And also blown away because they're serially numbered to 5,000. I mean, serial number was a new thing. Uh, so this was kind of a double whammy with the die cut. Uh, funny story with this one was I did not pull this pack. We went to the hobby shop. My little sister, who had to have been seven years old or so at the time, you know, was uh, got a pack of cards not knowing what was going on as I was opening my packs. she I pulled crap and she pulled that. So um, it was just so funny. I took advantage of her completely as she was clueless. I gave her like 10, 15 common cards. Uh, so she thought that she won because she got uh, more cards, but I ultimately got that, which is good because if she didn't do that trade, then that card probably wouldn't exist. Um, next one here uh, was a card that, again, if it was a different player, it'd be a totally different story. Um, that is Fleer Ultra. I loved Fleer Ultra, just like I liked Fleer Met uh, Leaf Metal or whatever, the, the Metal Universe. Um, but I pulled a Platinum Medallion, and I loved the Gold Medallions, but when I came out and I pulled this um, Platinum Medallion, I was just blown away. I don't know the print run on them. I don't know if it's 100. They don't say the pr print run, but maybe it's 100, maybe it's 200, I don't know. Um, but if it was Griffey, yeah, a little bit of better Mariner to get. But um, still, it was just so cool to have a, uh, a platinum medallion. And again, that foil, I mean, I don't have to tell you. So uh, that one was awesome. Here's another one that brings back memories. Um, second Cousins, they were much older. You know, I had to have been 12 or 13. They were 20, whatever, had a Mustang. Fox Body Mustang. They were, you know, the cool people. Well, they took me to the local hobby shop, uh, I guess, up the street or whatever when they visited. And they were busting uh, finest uh, football. And I didn't care about football. I really still don't care to it about it to this day. But they gave me a few of their cards. And uh, I remember not knowing what to do because it is clear film, you know. And they ensure, assured me that uh, it would be better if I kept it unpeeled. So... There it is. Another one here uh, is not something that I remember, but uh, it's really one of the few ties, I guess, to my father. Um, so obviously, you know, born in the 50s, uh, he collected cards as a kid, you know, had them all in shoe boxes and rubber bands and all that stuff. And um, this was just one of those cards that survived the test of time. And it was one of those, you know, few cards that his mom or my grandmother did not throw out. Um, I don't know if that's Bobby Mercer's rookie or not. I don't know. Um, but um, just pretty cool to have something that he collect that he actually collected as a kid, regardless of its value. Um, so another one here. Uh, this card I was just blown away. I still am to this day. I wish they made more cards like this. Uh, magnetic Field, Derek Jeter. 
I actually have almost the whole set. I think I might have the whole set. Um, but uh, just the design, the bling. I mean, you cannot, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous. I don't care if this card was one per pack. I don't care if these were the base cards. Um, just gorgeous cards, gorgeous. Um, I just really enjoyed that card. Uh, two more here, I guess I'll show. This one here was my first clear card. Uh, Fleer Ultra, Season Crowns, Tony Gwynn, it's um, just really cool to have, a, I guess, a clear card that was just the coolest thing at the time, and I was, I really thought this was special because it's a promotional sample. I don't know how that made its way to packs, but I got it. Uh, I don't know to this day if it's harder to find or easier to find or what have you, but um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so, obviously, um, it, this was the rarest card I had as a kid pulled. Um, the Griffey uh, die-cut hitting machines, gold medallion. Um, again, to get, be able to get Griffey in this set with gold medallion, it's one in 28,000 packs. And I know that one's worth good money per a few comments last time. I think people were saying they go for like three to $600. Uh, but this was actually my second biggest pull, uh, and it was Griffey also. It's from Pinnacle Summit. This is the last card for the for the thing, and it's a Big Bang Mirage. You can kind of see the baseball kind of showing. Um, pulled this out of a pack, was blown away, and uh, yeah, it's numbered out of 600. Um, so yeah, I had that in a huge, huge clear plastic brick um, for so many years. So... Um, there you go, guys. Really quick stuff. Congratulations to Pepino Man, Beantown62, and Tony, Psyched On Baseball Cards. Uh, check them out. All right, take care, guys.